Okay, in step six, we find either the p-value or the critical values. We want to draw and label the curve, given that the test statistic in step five was z equals 1.25. So we found the p-value. Now we're going to do the critical value method. So now we know that back at the beginning, we know that this is a right tail. Okay. And we also know that the significance level is 0 0.05, okay? So when we're doing the critical value method, we need to find the critical value that's associated with alpha equal to 0 0.05. So the first thing we want to do is find the critical value for the significance level of 0 0.05. Now this is a one tail, which is a right tail. Since it's right tail, then the area that's going to be in the right tail is 0 0.05. So that means what is the critical value for that? So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and use stat crunch to find that. Okay. So we're going to come in here. We're going to go to stat and then go to calculators and then scroll all the way down to normal. Okay. We know that we have zero and then one and we want to find that value that's in the right tail. So we want to make sure it's going to be greater than or equal to. And now we're going to put in the area of 0 0.05 and then select compute. And that's going to give us what this critical value is. So the critical value here, and let me go ahead and copy that, is the following. So using that area of 0 0.05, we're going to round that to three decimal places. So we end up getting the critical value of 1.645. Okay, so now what we're going to do is, now that we have our critical value, now we're going to draw our bell curve distribution. So here's our bell curve distribution. Okay. And so we know that this represents the mean. Okay. And then here, we're going to write down what is the critical value. So the critical value z alpha divided by 2 is 1.645 okay and we're concerned with the area that's to the left of that value okay um, excuse me to the right of that value now when we're doing the critical value method this represents the critical region Okay. Now that we've done that, now we need to look at the test statistic and determine where is the test statistic location according to this graph. So if we look at the test statistic, 1.25 is going to be somewhere here. So the test statistic, which is Z, which is equal to 1.25, is the test statistic. Okay, now if you notice that that test statistic is to the left of that critical value and it's not in the critical region, which we'll then use for step number seven.